check one, two. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and good hope to all forever. Amen. Strengthen our Lord and our God, our weakness by your mercy, that we may celebrate the holy mysteries which have been given for the renewal and redemption of our weak nature, through the mercy of your beloved Son, O Lord of all, forever. Amen. Lord, who may abide in your dwelling and who may live on your holy mountain, with pure thoughts, O Lord, let me stand before your altar. He who walks without blame and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart and does not slander with his tongue. He who does no evil to his friend, nor accepts a bribe against his neighbor. He who despises in his sight the wrathful and honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his friend and does not lie and does not lend his money with interest. He who does not take a bribe against the innocent, whoever does these things is just and shall never be shaken. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen and amen. With pure thoughts, O Lord, let me stand before your altar. Let us pray. Peace be with us. For all your benefits and graces for us that cannot be repaid, we praise and glorify you without ceasing in your crown church, filled with all graces and blessings, for you are the Lord and creator of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. To you, Lord of all, we thank. And to, and to you, Jesus, Jesus Christ, we praise. For you are the resurrector of our bodies and the Savior of our souls. I wash my hands in innocence and persist around your altar, Lord. To you, Lord of all, we thank. And to you, Jesus Christ, we praise. For you are the resurrector of our bodies and the Savior of our souls. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen and amen. To you, O Lord, of all we thank, and to you, Jesus Christ, we praise. For you are the resurrector of our bodies and the Savior of our souls. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Lord, you are truly the resurrector of our bodies, the good Savior of our souls, and faithful guardian of our lives. It is right to thank, adore, and glorify you at all times, O Lord of all, forever. Amen. Raise your voice and praise the living God. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Forever and ever, amen and amen. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. 
Let us pray. Peace be with us. O holy, glorious, mighty, and immortal one who dwells and delights in the saints, we implore you, Lord, to turn to us, forgive us, have mercy on us as always, O Lord of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Make us wise, O Lord, with your teachings, enlighten us with your knowledge, and sanctify our souls with your truth. Grant that we may be obedient to your words and faithful to your commandments at all times, O Lord of all, forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Bless me, Father. Christ enlighten you with his holy teaching. Faith is a realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, we understand that the universe was ordered by the word of God, so that what is visible came into being through the invisible. By faith, Abel offered to God a sacrifice greater than Cain's. Through this, he was attested to be righteous, God bearing witness to his gifts. And through this, though dead, he still speaks. By faith, an anoch was taken upon so that he should not be seen. And he was found no more because God has taken him. Before he was taken up, taken up he was attested to have pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For anyone who approaches God must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah warned about what was not yet seen. With reverence, built an ark for the salvation of his household. Through this, he condemned the word and inherited the righteousness that comes through faith. Let us stand in preparation to hear the Holy Silence be attentive. Peace be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to Christ our Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you, then, you know, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. And glory to God forever. Glory to Christ our Lord. Good evening, family. All right, we read from, um, I won't preach too long, I, I think, um, <laughs> I think, right? Uh, because uh, we'll have the talk after on St. Joseph the Faithful. And so that's why I picked these two readings. Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 1, it begins, faith, what is faith? We think, like, what is it? Faith is the confidence in what we hope for, the realization of things we have not yet seen. Uh, we know that last Sunday we, we meditated on the gospel was doubting Thomas and how Thomas didn't have faith. He said, I have to see to believe. And Hebrews, St. Paul says, faith is the confidence in what we hope for. And we also read in Romans that how can we hope for what we, do, what we see? We hope for what we don't see. And so there's this dynamic in faith, faith and hope, of we don't see, but we believe. Amen? And so, but here's the beauty of faith. 
Uh, in Hebrews 11, it goes through one by one all of the prophets, all of the patriarchs, all of the ones that came before Christ that really made a way for the incarnation. And it goes one by one, step by step. It talks about Enoch, it talks about Abraham later, it talks about Noah. And so our faith is in God's faithfulness. 2 Th Thessalonians chapter 3. God is faithful, and we know that God is faithful by all that he has done in salvation history. We know that God is faithful because of Jesus Christ. And if it wasn't for the cross and the love of God poured in, like, if it wasn't for what we know and what we see, then it would be hard to believe. But he's already done it, and he is faithful. And so he, he asked for us to respond in faith. I want to kind of ingrain that verse in our minds. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Just think of triple one. 11.1. 1. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for. Romans 8 talks about hope and says, how do we hope for what we see? Of course, we hope for what we don't see. There's a blindness to faith. There's a blindness to hope. But God is faithful and he has revealed it. I know I just said that, but... It's just passionate. All right. And so we believe. We believe in Jesus as the way, truth, and life. And so Jesus is imploring his apostles in John 14, I am the way, truth, and life. And he's saying the Father is in me. Me and the Father are one. He is saying believe in the Trinity of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. True faith, it cannot just be blind it cannot just be, I feel it. There has to be some intellect as well. There has to be some reason. And Jesus is explaining the nature of God in John 14. I am in the Father. The Father is in me. Philip is like, hey, show us the Father. And Jesus is like, hey, have you been with me this long? You still don't know the Father? Hello? I don't know if he was like that. Like, you know, I don't know if he was frustrated or not. But if you guys watch The Chosen, then you'll see Jesus frustrated a little bit lately. You guys watching The Chosen? solid show okay so um you know and then he teaches philip and so my my point in this is like yes our faith is a little bit blind it's a little bit of like we don't know and we don't see yet but the lord has revealed so much and he is revealing to us that him and the father are one that one john four god is love he's a relationship of love and so um what I believe and what I know is when we, when we know more about God, the knowledge of God leads to a deeper desire for God. And then a desire for God leads to a, a, a more of like a desire to know God. And so mind and heart, back and forth, a unity um, of faith. Let's continue to pray this Mass in faith. Rahim Sawa Rahim Ta Kulan is far away. Wama Rahim Yabore Kadish 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 Maria Allah. Forever, Amen. By your command, our Lord and our God, by your command, our Lord and our God, by your command, our Lord and our God. These glorious, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries are placed and set upon the absolving altar until the second coming of our Lord from heaven. To him be glory at all times and forever. Amen. May this sacrifice be accepted and sanctified by the word of God and the Holy Spirit, that it may be for our help and salvation and life everlasting in the kingdom of heaven through the grace of Christ. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. On the holy altar, let us remember the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Forever and ever, amen and amen. Friends and apostles of the Holy Son, pray that there may be peace in creation. Let all people say amen and amen on the holy altar. We recall St. Joseph the Faithful with the triumphant and crowned martyrs. All depart our waiting in hope that by your glorious resurrection you will raise them in glory. We believe. In one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Be with us. Pray in the memory of our fathers, patriarchs, bishops, and kings, deacons, deos, and deacons and all those who have departed from this world into heaven. Let us also pray for our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, and for all the rulers who love Christ. Let us also remember all the prophets and apostles, the martyrs and confessors, here and everywhere. May God, who crowned them, give us with them on the day of the resurrection from the dead, good hope and ensure inheritance of life in the kingdom of heaven. We ask help from you for the strength of our souls, so that with perfect charity and true faith we celebrate your gift to us, and we raise to you glory, honor, thanksgiving, and praise, now at all times and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. With you and with their spirit. Brothers and sisters, give peace to one another in the love of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us, now at all times and forever. Amen. Lift up your thoughts to you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, the King of glory. This sacrifice is offered to God, the Lord of all. It is right and just. Peace be with us. The name of the glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is worthy of glory from every mouth, thanksgiving from every tongue, and adoration and exaltation from all creation. O Lord, you created the world in your grace and its inhabitants in your compassion redeemed mankind in your mercy, with countless heavenly beings who worship your greatness, myriads of angels, beings of light and spirit who glorify your name, and with the holy cherubim and the spiritual seraphim who offer adoration to your majesty, they proclaim by saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of his glory, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who came and will come. In the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. These heavenly hosts, we praise you, O Lord. With these heavenly hosts, we praise you, O Lord. And we bless your word, the hidden offspring of your bosom, the likeness and the glory of your splendor and the image of your substance. He did not deem equality with you as something to be robbed, but emptied himself and took the form of a slave. He left us a memorial of our salvation, this mystery which we offer before you. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread with his sacred hands, raised his eyes to you, God, his almighty Father, gave you thanks and blessed. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. In a similar way, after the supper, he took the cup with his sacred hands and gave you thanks and blessed. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, the mystery of faith which will be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. We believe and confess. As you have commanded us, we, your humble, weak, and feeble servants, have gathered here to celebrate your great mercy toward us, which cannot be repaid. 
For you, our Lord and our God, have assumed our humanity that we might live in your divinity, exalted our lowliness, raised us from our fall, revived our mortality, forgiven our debts, justified our sinfulness, enlightened our minds, and overcome our enemies. For your help and graces toward us, we lift to you glory, honor, thanksgiving, and praise, now at all times and forever. Amen. Pray silently. Peace be with Lord us. Lord God Almighty, accept this sacrifice which we offer you for all your blessings bestowed on Our Lady, the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, to Saint Joseph, the faithful, and all the just and pious fathers who have been pleasing to you, all the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors. We offer it also for the Holy Catholic Church and for our Holy Fathers, Mar Francis, the Supreme Pontiff and Pope of Rome, Mar Luis, the Patriarch, Mar Francis, the Bishop of our Diocese, Mar Ibrahim, our Spiritual Father, all bishops, priests, deacons, monks, and nuns. Accept this sacrifice, O Lord God Almighty, for all who are in sorrow and distress, the needy, weary, sick, and afflicted, all the deceased who have departed from our midst, and for this people who gaze and await your mercy. May this sacrifice be accepted, our Lord and our God, for all who are present before your holy altar. Hear their prayers, pardon their sins, and forgive their iniquities for this country and its inhabitants, this city and those who dwell in it. Protect it, O Lord, by your grace, and dispel all evil from it. Christ, the peace of those in heaven and on earth. Fill the world with your peace and harmony. O Lord, especially your holy Catholic Church, bring harmony between church and state. Put an end to wars on earth and calm the nations that desire war, so that we may live a peaceful life in purity and fear of God. And we also, O Lord, your humble and weak servants who are gathered in your name and stand before you at this moment, we have received through tradition the example of your Son, while rejoicing, glorifying, and exalting, we commemorate and celebrate this great holy life-giving and divine mystery of the passion, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In silence and in reverence, stand and pray that peace be with us. May your Holy Spirit come, O Lord, and rest upon this sacrifice to bless and sanctify it. May it become for us the pardon of debts, the forgiveness of sins, the great hope for the resurrection of the dead, and new life in the kingdom of heaven with all who have pleased you. For this great and marvelous providence for us, we praise and glorify you without ceasing in your church, redeemed by the precious blood of your Christ. With praise in our lips and radiant faces, we raise glory, thanksgiving, and praise for your living, holy, and life-giving name, now at all times and forever. Amen. The grace of your mercy, our Lord and our God, draws us near to these glorious, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries. Although we are unworthy. Truly we are unworthy. We, with true faith in your name, O Lord, we approach these holy mysteries. In your mercy we break, and in your compassion we sign the life-giving body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The precious blood is signed with the life-giving body of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. The sacred body is signed with the forgiving blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Glory be. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the cherubim, seraphim, and the archangels, in fear and awe, stand before the altar, gazing upon the priest, as he breaks and shares the body of Christ for the forgiveness of sins. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us, now at all times and forever. Amen. Let us approach with piety and reverence the mystery of the precious body and blood of our Savior. With a pure heart and true faith, let us recall his passion and meditate on his resurrection. For our sake, the only begotten of God took from humanity a mortal body with a rational and immortal soul. By his life-giving laws and his holy commandments, he led us from error to the knowledge of the truth. According to his plan of salvation for us, the firstborn of our humanity was tested on the cross. He rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. He gave us his holy mysteries by which we recall all his graces for us. Therefore, with overflowing love and a humble will, let us receive the gift of eternal life. 
Let us participate in the mysteries of the church through pure prayer and deep contrition. With hope in our repentance, let us convert from our iniquities, weep over our sins, and ask mercy and pardon from God, the Lord of all, as we forgive our neighbors their offenses. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. Let us purify our conscience from divisions and disputes. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. Let us purify our souls from hatred and hostility. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. Let us receive this communion and be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. United in one mind, let us receive in harmony these mysteries. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. Let these mysteries, Lord, be for the resurrection of our bodies and the salvation of our souls. And everlasting. Let us pray. Peace be with us. Forgive, O Lord, in your mercy our sins and offenses and sanctify us by your grace. Make us worthy, our Lord and our God, to stand always before you with pure hearts and radiant faces. With the filial confidence that comes from your mercy, we call upon you and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Yes, O Lord, God Almighty, you are good and Father, full of mercy. We beg the greatness of your compassion. Do not let us fall into temptation, Lord but deliver us from the evil one and his host. For yours is the kingdom, power, and authority in heaven and on earth, now at all times and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. With you and with your spirit. The holy is suitable for the holy ones. One holy Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Glorify the living God. Glory to him and his church. And may his mercy and kindness be forever upon us. Sanctify our bodies by our holy body. Pardon our sins by our precious blood. And purify our conscience by your mercy. Christ, you are hope and your nature forever. gift of grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be perfected in all of us through his mercy. The church calls us to receive the body of the Son and to drink his chalice and faith in his kingdom.
May the mysteries that we have received in faith be for the forgiveness of our sins. O Christ, King of all ages, you took the form of a slave and creator. Through your body and blood, you have atoned the sins and offenses of your believers. Make us worthy to behold your second coming with confidence. And with the multitudes of the heavenly host, we raise to you glory. Amen and amen. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, we have all approached and shared in the reception of these glorious, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries. Let us thank and glorify God who has given them. Glory to him for his indescribable gift. Let us pray. Peace be with us. We praise you, O Christ, and we bless you, for you have come and visited our hearts this day by receiving your body, blood, and your divine word. We beseech you that the mysteries we have received may bring the fruits of hope, peace, and joy forever. Amen. Barakmar. May our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have served, glorified, and glorified, make us worthy of the glory of his kingdom and the eternal joy with his angels. May he make us worthy to appear blameless before him through his grace and mercy and to stand at his right hand in the heavenly Jerusalem through his glorious holy life-giving and divine mysteries. To him be glory. May his right hand of mercy overshadow us in all creation, now, at all times, and forever. Amen. May Michael the archangel defend, defend us, us in, in battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. All right, we'll start the talk in a couple of minutes. Just uh, continue to do your like prayers after the Eucharist. Good evening again. So this is the fourth month of the year of St. Joseph. What an incredible honor for us at our parish to be here. And Pope Francis calling this year the year of St. Joseph. Uh, we are meditating on um, 
just the different virtues of St. Joseph. I, I know in two months ago was St. Joseph the most chaste spouse. I forgot what last, last month was or the first month. Um, January, St. Joseph the protector of the church. Christina, can I get one of those as well? And so, uh, this month we will meditate on St. Joseph, the faithful, the most faithful. He is the um, second most powerful saint in all of heaven, and his prayers are so powerful, we can't even fathom them, really. <laughs> uh, but after the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was immaculately conceived, who was without sin, St. Joseph is the terror of demons and such a powerful saint. And so it is very fitting to call him St. Joseph Most Faithful. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. If you have the, um, the card, we'll read the prayer on the bottom. Dear St. Joseph, pray that I too, through the grace of God, may have the courage and the strength to move forward through the storms of life and remain faithful. Amen. So faith, as I said in the homily, faith is, as Hebrews 11 says, faith is the confidence in what we hope for, the assurance of things that we do not see. So it's confidence in what we hope for, and what we hope for is God's deliverance, God's mercy, and God's compassion. What we hope for is God's love. And St. Joseph, he had a lot of confidence and expectation in what God was doing. And that is exactly why when he got those dreams, he knew that they were from God. Saint, uh, Second Thessalonians, like I said in the homily, it says, The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. If we ever feel attacked by the devil or attacked by life or whatever, if there's any struggle in life, St. Joseph, being so faithful, knew that God was fighting for him. Uh, if you're at CLC, like the high schoolers know this a little bit, but during COVID and during that time, I was reading Bible in a year. You guys are reading Bible in a year. It's awesome. And I was in Exodus and how Exodus is all about, you know, the Israelites were in slavery and God delivered them. But there were times where they felt like God was abandoning them or like, how could God be good? You know, we're going to perish or whatever. And God said through Moses, God said, the Lord is fighting for you. Just be still. Moses telling the people, God is fighting. God is faithful. And so St. Joseph, we know St. Joseph was just like that. Now St. Joseph had a confidence that the Messiah would come from the line of Judah. That was the prophecy. That it was from Joseph's line that God would come. Again, Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is what? The confidence in what we hope for. St. Joseph, being a very, very faithful man, had a confidence that God was going to deliver his people through his line. St. Joseph came from the line of Judah, from the line of David. And so, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew actually starts with the genealogy of Jesus. And I'm going to read a little bit of it, okay? This is right from the beginning. People start the Bible and Matthew, the, the Gospels. Matthew's the first one. They'll start the Gospels and be like, whoa, this is so boring right away. But this is a powerful part. And it's Matthew 1, verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. So remember Judah. Obed, became the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David the king. Who's David? Who's King David? David was that second king after, after King Saul, who was an amazing, amazing king. He wrote the Psalms. Who was David's son? It says, David became the father of Solomon. Solomon wrote the Book of Wisdom. Solomon wrote the Song of, I think, and, no, yeah, don't misquote me. Oh, the, Solomon wrote Proverbs. Who's, and then, you know, Solomon, he was, uh, God asked him, like, hey, Solomon, what do you want? I'll give you anything. And Solomon said, I want wisdom. That is the greatest gift that I can ever get, get from God. 
All right, so we're going to continue. Genealogy of Jesus. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. And then I skipped a bunch. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel, and I skipped a bunch. Mathan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Messiah. St. Joseph, most faithful, knew that the line of the Messiah must come from him. And he knew his genealogy. St. Joseph shows his faith in multiple ways, but in the, in the remainder of my talk, I want to focus on how St. Joseph heard God's voice, he discerned that this was God's voice, and then he responded by faith. So when you hear God's voice, the faithful say yes. Now, funny thing about Joseph, we know St. Joseph never said a word in the Bible. He's not quoted in any way. But when he heard the voice of God in two dreams, two main dreams, first take your, uh, take your wife, she's born of the Holy Spirit, she's pregnant of the Holy Spirit, and then also run to Egypt. So he heard that voice and he acted right away. So we're going to read Matthew. I'm going to read Matthew 1. And then Matthew 2, uh, those two dreams, okay? Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. But before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Look at Joseph's response. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son and he named him Jesus. And then the second dream. When they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. So I want us to recognize faith is in response to God's voice. Faith is in response to God's faithfulness. And Joseph had so, St. Joseph had so much faith and such a powerful discernment and ability to know God's voice. Now, sometimes we feel God speaking to us, but how do we know? You might think, oh, it's, something's coming up in my head and I'm, I'm thinking this. So is it me? I want us to know that there are three inspirations or, or ways of like kind of knowing. It's either... When you get a word, it's either God, it's either you, or it's the devil. And Joseph had such a powerful awareness, an ability to know God's voice. I'm going to focus on two keys in hearing God's voice. The first one is that God speaks in according to his true nature. That when God speaks, it's in accord with who God is. In the beginning was the word. God speaks a word. And his word is Jesus. The way you perceive God, though, greatly is greatly influenced by, um, greatly influences your ability to hear him. So I want us to understand this real quick. You feel like God is saying something to you. OK? 
okay? Is this God? It's God if it's in accord with his nature. Is it good? Is, is it a good word? But one danger is that if we do not know who God is, then we will have an, a very, di- a, we will not really be able to hear his voice or know that it is from him. The beautiful thing of St. Joseph is he got the dream, he heard from the angel, he believed it, and he went. He was so faithful because he knew his God. He knew his faithfulness. Again, our faith, our faith is rooted in God's faithfulness. And so when we talk about St. Joseph most faithful, we're really glorifying the beauty of God's faithfulness and how Joseph responded to that. Joseph is responding to what God is saying, and that's what faith is. But if we have an image problem of God, we will have a hearing problem of God. If we don't know who God is, then we will not perceive God when he speaks. St. Joseph knew who God was and heard God's voice, and because of his faith as well, he acted. That's where in the homily I talked a little bit about the intellectual reality of faith, like, you have to know. You have to really know who God is. Obviously, our children don't know too much, and they have a simplicity in faith. But when we get older, we've got to learn. We've got to read. We've got to study. If we have a false view of God, it will directly impact our ability to hear him. And so St. Joseph's job for all of us is to smash the false image of God. St. Joseph reveals the true nature of God. He makes way for the Son of God. And if it wasn't for St. Joseph and his response in faith, the Son of God would not have been born. St. Joseph smashes false images of God, and we need to smash them. One thing I'm very passionate about, you guys might know if you serve with me, is um, with youth ministry. I cannot stand motivating kids through fear. Because... When we were growing up, it was all, fear God, you should be afraid of him, and we're going to yell at you. Like, you're going to go to hell if you do this. You're going to go to hell if you do this. Never tell a child that. Because the child will build up a false image of God, and it will destroy their ability to hear God's true voice. This key that I'm saying is, God speaks according to his nature. And if we do not have true nature of God, we don't know God, then we won't hear him. St. Joseph, in his faith, knew who God was and was able to hear him and then acted. The second key I want to talk, just quickly maybe, um, is when we hear God's voice, we should consider the fruits that come from it or the effect that it has on us. When you hear a word from God, consider what it's doing. Now, the Lord does speak. God speaks to us, and I love hearing his voice. I, sometimes I start prayer, and I start with, like, Lord, I praise you, I glorify you, you are worthy of all honor and praise. And then I'll sit in some silence and um, just kind of dwell in his presence. But then eventually in my prayer, I'll say, Father, what do you want to say to me today? And then I'll listen. Maybe a word will come. God speaks according to his nature, and we know it comes from God uh, based on the fruits that come from it. You want to ask yourself, what effect does the word have to me, have on me? Is it accusatory, judgmental, angry, and hopeless? Well, when God speaks, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5, come. When God speaks, you'll start experiencing love, Joy, peace, gentleness, patience, self-control. Pope Benedict said, God's words are not just informative, but they're performative. So God's word is not just, okay, I'm learning something, I'm, I'm being taught something, or, or like, cool, you know? Like, thanks, God, you told me something. But when God speaks, something happens in us. And so when God speaks peace, we start experiencing peace in our bodies. When God speaks joy, I'm sure you're going to start smiling. Amen? When God speaks love, you feel a tenderness in your gut. 
when God speaks conversion, you feel a, oof, I do have to convert. And that's our pride speaking too. Okay? That's the battle. When God is calling you to conversion, sometimes God's just consoling you. Sometimes God's just like, hey, I, I want to love you right now. But sometimes God will say change, and, and then the battle's happening inside of you. The evil one will always use fear. He often uses fear. But 1 John 4 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. The fruit of fear is control. The fruit of fear is control. We saw that in the media this past year. They want to control us by making us afraid. But God does not want to control you. So God will not speak to you in fear. And the beauty of St. Joseph, St. Joseph most faithful, is that maybe he experienced some fear, some like tension, but he never gave into it because he was most faithful. Joseph's faith, or Joseph's way, is in hearing God's voice, discerning God's voice. He knew it. He knew God's voice versus his voice or versus the devil's voice. As a matter of fact, we know St. Joseph, terror of demons. The devil was afraid of St. Joseph. Terror of demons. Joseph and Mary, in their faith, are models to those discerning those, their vocations. It's uh, very helpful to pray through, through Mary and St. Joseph when we're thinking, what, Lord, what are, what are you calling me to? Or, Lord, what do you want to say to me? St. John Paul II, he says that Joseph responded positively to the word of God when it was communicated to him. While it is true that Joseph did not respond like Mary did, Mary said, uh, let it be done unto me according to your word. You know, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Mary spoke out, and Joseph, in a very manly fashion, expressed his most faithful faith, his beauty of faith, in action. He had obedience. The obedience of faith must be given to God as he reveals himself. By this obedience of faith, man or we freely commit ourselves entirely to God. And so part of faith is a surrender. And St. Joseph fully surrendered his life. He must have had a plan with Mary, but then he finds her with child. He receives a dream. God says, go to Egypt. Okay, come back. Now live in Nazareth. God had a plan for Joseph. And Joseph, in his faith, responded well. And he surrendered fully to God. Last thing I want to say is, in the course of Joseph's faith and his pilgrimage of faith, um, he remained faithful to God's call to the end. He stayed with Jesus and Mary. And Joseph is known as the patron of a happy death that at the last moment of his hour, of his, uh, the last breath, he had Jesus and Mary by his side. Joseph teaches us that by being most faithful, by welcoming Jesus and Mary, we can also have the grace of a happy death. We, uh, we already know Joseph is in heaven, he's interceding for us, and he is most faithful, most powerful. Let's just close again by praying that prayer again. Dear St. Joseph, pray that I too, through the grace of God, may have the courage and the strength to move forward through the storms of life and remain faithful. Amen. And through the intercession of St. Joseph, most faithful, our blessed Virgin Mary, through the intercession of all angels and saints, may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Good night.